Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Living Faith Full Gospel Baptist Church for our service on this Sunday, September the 8th of 2024, second Sunday in September. We welcome you. We thank you for joining us wherever you are, whenever, whatever time you're watching this and wherever you're watching it from. We pray that you and your family are well. We're going to open our service as we always do with a hymn. My husband is responsible. Pastor Moore has requested a very special hymn this morning before he comes. It's a hymn that is very dear to those of us in the Black church, uh, one of the most uh, beloved hymns in all of Christian churches, but it has a very interesting history. Amazing Grace, written by John Newton, and some of you may know John Newton at one time in his life was a slave trader, but what you may not know is that he had a very uh, horrible life and childhood he got he became a slave trader because he was kicked out of the british navy and they punished him by assigning him to a slave ship as part of the crew and he worked on that ship for many years and from all reports he was a very evil ugly man he hated god he hated people who loved god and then one day the ship almost was destroyed and as often happens when we face death he had a change of heart about god and thought maybe he ought to try that again but he didn't become a christian right away and a lot of people think he wrote this hymn while he was on that boat but he didn't but it did start him towards the path to being a christian then he married a godly woman who helped him even more eventually god delivers him completely he's saved he becomes a minister of the gospel in england and he becomes an abolitionist fighting against slavery and while he was a minister pastoring at a church in england he wrote this song, and that's what we're going to open with this morning. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. I like the second verse. Was grace that taught my heart to feel, and grace my fears relieved. How precious dear. That grace appear the hour I first believed. Amen. Amazing grace, the wonderful song and a wonderful thing, the grace of God. Our scripture this morning is coming from the book of Psalms, Psalm 145, Psalm 145, I'll be reading from the New Living Translation, and the word of the Lord says, I will exalt you, my God and King, and praise your name forever and ever. I will praise you every day. Yes, I will praise you forever. Great is the Lord. He is most worthy of praise. No one can measure his greatness. Let each generation tell its children of your mighty acts. Let them proclaim your power. I will meditate on your majestic, glorious splendor and your wonderful miracles. Your awe-inspiring deeds will be on every tongue. I will proclaim your greatness. That's Psalm 145, verses 1 through 6. The word of the Lord is blessed, as are those who hear it and obey it. Let's pray together, living faith. 
We have many, many prayer requests this morning. Uh, we have a lot of people on, who are sick and shut in this morning, which is why we're virtual today. We have uh, people both in our church family here in, in Cleveland, Mississippi, and uh, our extended church family who are dealing with illness. We got a good praise report this morning from Brittany, who is, uh, she's been tested and she's preparing for her procedure, but she's, they understand what the problem is and she's trusting God to uh, bring her all the way through and heal her. We're praying with the Sanders family this morning. Uh, our state representative, Robert Sanders, lost his daughter. And we are praying with the family in, the, in their grief. We're praying for my sister, Karen, who should be en route to Canada right now and on her way home. We're praying for her safe travel. We're praying for our sister, Rita, over in Nigeria, who watches us faithfully and communicates with us faithfully. And we're so happy to know that she's still uh, staying connected with us. And we're praying for her. And we're praying for the victims of the shootings, recent shootings, particularly the school shooting in Georgia. We're praying over all of our children. And we're praying, Lord, for an end to both violence and use of guns to solve issues. So we're praying for all of these things and we're putting it all before the throne of God. The word of God says, cast your care on him because he cares for you. Father, we come this morning in the wonderful matchless name of Jesus. We come this morning, Father, obedient and thankful children. We are grateful, Lord, for all that you have done. We are grateful for all of your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. We thank you, Lord, that no matter what we were like before, you loved us, you saved us, and now we can call you Father. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your son, our Lord Jesus. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the cross. We thank you, Lord, for the empty tomb. We thank you, Lord, that you're coming again for us. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome among us today. Help us, Lord, make everything we say and do today be pleasing in your sight. Let it be food for your people. Help us to feed the flock and to be fed by the bread from heaven. Help us, Lord, to hear your word and to do your word. We thank you, Lord, for raising up our pastor and giving him the strength to preach your word. Give us ears to hear and hearts to do what you speak to us through him today. We ask it all in the mighty, magnificent name of Jesus. Amen. A couple of quick announcements, and then I shall roll out of the way, and pastor is coming. We have coming up some exciting things in the church. I'm going to let some of those things be announced to you later. Sister Purdue has an announcement for the young people, something that's coming up for them. And pastor has a project coming that we, he's also going to probably share with you all. Bible study on Wednesday night continues. We are all welcome to join us on Wednesday nights for Bible study on Zoom at six, I'm sorry, at 7 p.m. Central Time. Right now we're studying Romans chapter eight and what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to be a child of God? We encourage you to uh, join us for Bible study. Now we're gonna hear from Pastor Moore and our message for today. morning. I was reading the other night. Uh, I'm not uh, where it says that 
I'm not ashamed to preach the gospel. I'm not ashamed this morning to say that I'm a child of God and that I thank him for saving me. You know, uh, a lot of times we forget the blessing that God has bestowed on us. We forget that when we need something, that we can go to God. Now, most of a lot of us have uh, trials and tribulation that we go through. And I was going to talk about this morning the importance of the church that you can that can be found in the books of Act. But I want everybody out there to know what it is that I'm going to talk about this morning. I'm talking about the whole uh, about being a sinner. Because a lot of us don't understand that even that uh, understand about sin. I'm moving around in my chair and I was laughing while I was moving around because uh, Mr. A.C. King uh, third grade that's what he wanted want to be known as third grade he walked up to me and he said, Are that, is, is, is that what God going to do? He going to give us legs like that when we get to heaven? I said, uh, I don't, uh, it caught me by surprise. I bring that up because I love to talk about the. It just uh, blows my mind when I see kids doing stuff like kids uh, four and five years old leading a quartet or whatever. And the reason for this is because of the fact for I think with the babies you see they they know it's just something in them that let them know that God exists. It's we the older ones who have a problem with knowing uh, uh, knowing God. So a lot of time I get frustrated because it seems like I'm twisting my message one way or the other and whatever, but that's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm trying to do is to bring, uh, bring the message. Uh, I'm not trying to be a, a, a scholar just bring the message so that uh, God's people can hear it. Now that I had my say, morning, children of God. I want you to know that God loves you. I love you. And we welcome you to living faith, uh, full gospel Baptist church. And if you listen to us, I want you to feel like this is this is this is your home, just like it's my home. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the fact all of that if you use your uh, imagination to understand what I was trying to get it about when I was talking to kids and people not, not understanding. I mean, we live in this wonderful world and uh, and we don't, we still don't understand 
that we need God to show show us the way. For we are our sinners. To show us the way because we are sinners. In Acts 2, as I said, I'm not, that's not the subject today. But in Acts 2, one of the things that he tells us to do besides fellowship is to pray. Mm -hmm. If we'll pray more, we will stay out of sinful things. Mm -hmm. So we got to show asking God this morning to show us the way for we are sinners. My question to you this morning, any of you who listen to me, do you think that you are a sinner? Well, I'm suffering. So uh, I couldn't be a sinner uh, because God done let, let this happen to me. Well, let's read some scripture. We're going to just go on, on Pastor Moore this morning. You see, surely I am sinful at birth. Sinful from the time my mother conceived me. That's in Psalm 515. Go on and let us read a little more. As for you, you was dead in your transgression. The, the, the things that you transgression doing things that you did didn't uh didn't uh, uh shouldn't be doing your transgression and sins like the rest we were was nature we was by nature deserving of wrath in other words we should have got punished mm -hmm. according to his reason two and thirteen for all have sinned and falls short of glory of God. That's in Romans uh, 3 and 23, uh, Romans 3 and 23. God forgive us through Jesus. He give us, forgive us through Jesus. And we should, every time we think, walking through the days, the Bible tells us, the, 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 the pray or whatever to uh, nine uh, is, is, is at least nine times a day that we should say, God, forgive me. But we uh, forgive me. Romans 5 and 8 say, when you were dead in your sin, God made you alive in Christ. He forgave us all our sins. Colossians say, 2 and 13, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in trans, I mentioned that word before, in transgression. It is by grace you have been saved. So we just got through singing uh, with uh, with uh, LMO, Amazing Grace. You see, we're not talking about just N.O. Grace. We're talking about Amazing Grace. Huh? Amazing Grace that see you when you think don't nobody see you. That grace that, 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 that lift you up when you when you are down, that grace who will pick you up when you need to be picked up. That's the grace we're talking about. When we go, that grace that uh that was on the cross and said, so forgive them for they know not what they are doing. You see, this morning, uh, some time ago, for I uh and and I want to say that uh uh El Amor, for the last three Sundays, I believe, she uh, but she uh, taught us some wonderful thing that God uh, wanted us to know, and I I myself really enjoyed it. And when I was listening to it, it was like listening to music. You know what I mean? You put on put on the uh, record player. Oh, some of you don't know what I'm talking about record player. So uh, 
uh, when you put on your CD or whatever y'all use now. We can live a new life. And I want you to say with me, I want a new life through the Holy Spirit. Now I can't, I'm not sitting here bragging because I don't know the know the know the know uh uh the vice president, but I can tell by her character that she do know God. And uh she ain't the only one. But with all this shooting going around, one of the things she said, we don't have to live like this. Christians should not seek to uh, live a wicked life. Christians should not live a life, should not, you shouldn't be living a life uh, that, 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 that they're going to harm other people. We don't have to live like that. Therefore, if anyone in Christ, the new creation have come, the old have gone, gone, the new is here, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. I hope you listen to me this morning. You see, we, that's what's, see, we, this country is spiritually dead. This country is spiritually dead. And I remember, I, I remember sometimes, I'm old enough, enough to remember that when, uh, I believe it was AIDS or something that was happening, and all of the singers got together and they sung, we are the world. We are the world. This morning, we should, as a Christian, we should start us a movement that say, we are believers of Jesus Christ and we believe in peace and love. We are peace and love. Uh, and I think that a lot of this uh, stuff that we see will stop because we got people who, uh, because they don't believe in God, they in the lead right now. They are in the lead. And they are making, and, and because they are in the lead, the spirit discerns the spirit is upsetting you. Well, what we need to do is not just pray at, at, at living faith, full gospel Baptist church, we should be getting together with our brother that's across the track around the corner and say, hey, uh, at, at 11 o'clock, we all this, we should all pray. We should all, and, and, and if you can't come to living faith, pretend that we're holding each other's hand. I know that sounds crazy. In Nehemiah, they raised up their hand and bowed on their knees. In the old Christian a way of praying, they bowed on their knees. They didn't, didn't do like we do. You know, we get comfortable. We don't turn. We don't, we don't, we don't, we just stay like we are and, and pray. Most time we won't, we allow one person to pray. We should all be praying together. We should be praying together so that the church, when we pray that the bricks and, 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 and the, if you can see me, uh, and the roof should be rattling because uh, uh, and that's, you know, that, 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 that sound that they talk about, and, you know, that was made and when the Holy Spirit hit them, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to it. We were about in Acts 2. They came there. They didn't know what what to expect. But when they what, what and, 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 and then when it did, when the power came upon us, pray this morning for the power to come upon us. Pray that we uh uh don't remain the way that we are. Second Corinthians 2 and 5 and 17. And then we're gonna stop for the day. For the grace of God have has appeared. Listen to this, for the grace of God has appeared that offer salvation to all people. 
My neighbor, I like him. I like him. I like him. I like to sit on the porch with him here in the south. That's what we do. I sit in the backyard. I like to sit and drink a Coca Cola with him, and, and you know, and just talk about what happened in the neighborhood that day. But they don't, if they don't know Christ, we need to be offering salvation to them. We need to be a salvation to them. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness, no to ungodliness and worldly passion. I uh, uh, just just mentioned it, y'all. I praise God for uh, praise God for whatever He uh, uh, praise God for being able to just to get around. But one of the things that I have to do every so often, I have to get in my hospital bed. And I notice now that there are so many, uh, uh, we got to say no. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was watching the other day a, a commercial and young lady, and I'm not, I'm not saying that uh, I had to be looking at all for me to say what I'm saying. But they kept coming up on the screen, and I'm wondering what. And then I listened to what they said. It was young men's, and I asked myself, "What are they doing?" And then they were selling new telephones, and I was saying to myself, "Why you got to be like that with that?" Uh, I I need my granddad to describe it now. Uh, what you weighing to sell a telephone? You want a phone? Just walk up on the beach and hold it up and say hi. Here's a, a here's a new phone. Here's a, a you know a, a wish they would start back selling the ones I like. That's a, a they got the big letters on. You know what I'm talking about? You where you can where you can see them. That, that's what I would want you to do. But what it is, what is happening? We selling ungodliness. Because the implication is, I'm saying I'm selling phone, but I'm selling something else too, if you want it. Huh? And we sit there and just look at it and it just get all and it, it you know, and we uh uh and we, we sit there, but see, but we can. I told you though, but we can live a new life through Jesus, through the through the Holy Spirit. Well, Rev was that sound like a dull life? No, it won't. It won't be a dull life. One of the things that uh uh the Puritan did when they landed, even though we know the the history on this. You know, a lot of, you know, we came here uh, along with some of these folks and we end up being slaves. But nevertheless, even, uh, nevertheless, uh, when they came on these shores, one of the things that they did was they asked the ladies not to be wearing uh, see, I'm cut off on the word again. I know what I want to say, but I want to be respectful because they're finna build a new land, build new, uh, new community development. How can I build a community de development? How can you co uh, build community development when your eyes is? I know a good story, David. Did an ungodly thing because of the fact he didn't have no business doing it, but he did it. Watching his brother's wife uh, take a bath every day. So he got to the point that saying that I want it. But what was he, was it, was that ungodliness? Yes, it was. It was ungodliness. And we don't know how to live a life like that, you know. I'm 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 through with I'm getting through with this. Uh I'm I'm sorry. Uh I got cheering listening and I can't say some of the words that I want to say. 
say no to ungodliness and world worldly passion and and to live self-control upright and godly love in this present age while we while we uh wait for the blessed hope uh that's when God tells us in Galatians to have some control, have some patience, because if we want to live a new life, then we got to uh, live a new way. And you say, well, they, uh, you might say, well, uh, uh, it may not be happening, but I mean, it, ain't, it can't happen. Yes, it can. The appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. See, the blessed hope. The appearance of the glory of our, our great God is, and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself to redeem us from all of the weakness and purify, uh, and purify for himself our people that are, that are his own, eager to do what is good. That's in Titus 2, 11, 14. But even in Titus, but even even when he died to do this, think about what happened. Instead of them, they didn't even act, I mean, well, one, they, they was, it was killing him. Then they decided to sin by throwing dice uh, at the foot of the, foot of the crowd. You get what I'm saying? Because of the fact, uh, when we uh, when we in sin, we, whatever we do, we, could, we think we don't win, one. Every time we think when we are in wickedness, we think that we don't want. No, God just forgive us to my Christian. If you pray and repent for it. In the name of Jesus this morning, we're going to cut off uh, cut off at this time. I uh, uh, they tried to get me to uh, get the cataract cut off my eyes, and I didn't do it. I think I'm gonna have to go back and let them let them do whatever they do to get the cataracts. But whatever, we're gonna say amen, and we're gonna say uh 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 uh. And we prayed for uh, everybody, but we forgot about uh, uh, forgot about Josh. Josh away in school. From what I understand, he's doing pretty good. And I praise God. All right, Amen, y'all. Say Amen with me. I can't even.